Surf 102.5 Podcast. As Hoi Hin aims to open up to tourism, considerable work is being done on Hoi Hin Airport. John LaRoche is the co-founder and CEO of the Phoenix Group that's overseeing development. I asked John about his company. Well, we're a Hong Kong-based uh, company. We are focused on the aviation industry and we manage airports. What we did in coming to Wahin was there's a whole sector of the market that's really not being addressed. We all know about Savarna Boom and Damwang and yeah. Phuket and the like, or Changi, um, but we don't hear too much about the small and medium, uh, small and regional airports. Mm. There's a whole area of the market, and in Thailand, that means 28 airports that really do not get the service and support, yet the passengers arriving in those airports have all the same expectations of big airports, but we don't have critical mass. So we've decided to take a look at this uh, sector of the market and start building uh, those kinds of services for these small and regional airports. You held a press conference back in April. Tell me about the progress that you've made between April and now. Well, you know, that April meeting was the culmination of about nine months work, uh, you know, right in the middle of COVID, as you know. And what we decided to do was, of all those airports that, are, that we know in Thailand right now, perhaps the gem, the hidden gem at the moment is Wahin, because Wahin already has a wonderful tourist base, number one tourist destination domestically in Thailand, uh, with a great opportunity. So we went to the Department of Airports and said, you know, we would like to help you commercialize this airport. And we did a deal, which is essentially a, a PPP, uh, privatizing Wahin Airport. And in that process now, we had to ensure that we had a strategy and a plan. And any plan for an airport has to start with the airlines. Yeah. So we spent the first couple of months talking to key uh, region, regional partners, uh, key airlines, and uh, assessing their appetite to come to Wahin. After at about the end of June, we were satisfied with the progress made, and we had uh, the better part of six or seven letters of intent to come to Wahin. Mm. And at that stage, we got serious and started looking at what an implementation would look like. The government saw um, a resource, to be honest, uh, some international expertise. We will not be focusing on domestic uh, aircraft. We will be an international airport. That uh, makes a statement about moving around in Thailand, but with uh, Bangkok only 200 kilometers away, you know, world-class shopping and world-class medical care is is an advantage that we have over some of the other destinations. So the combination of that and the fact that we were going to finance this uh, refurbishment and we were going to bring partners in, not only aero partners such as airlines, but also uh, tier one brands that will participate in creating an experience at the airport and in the town. So all of that, the government saw their way to signing the initial deal. We had to prove ourselves, which is what we're doing right now. And that uh, five-year agreement, we're looking to turn into 30 years. There's talk of still of some domestic flights probably starting here in Hua Hin. So how does that work with your plans of bringing in international planes? Yeah, it doesn't change our plans at all. I mean, those the, anybody in with an existing route you know is likely to stay but we will not be pursuing those uh, those routes you have to imagine that you know we still are one gate uh, airport yeah. and when we have a domestic flight we essentially shut the airport down a couple of hours on either side of one of those landings because we can't have an international flight and a domestic at the same time we're not going to stop anything that's already begun but our focus will be international and so with flights that probably uh, come into like a Phuket or Chiang Mai internationally, and would there be a certain uh, opportunity for them to hop over into Hua Hin and back via uh, an international flight? I would call that a more medium term plan for us. Okay. Uh, we will not be pursuing those. We'll be pursuing direct flights into Hua Hin. That, that, that remains the strategy. We have some limitations at the airport. The uh, runway is 2.1 kilometers long. Mm. That, um, that restricts us to narrow body aircraft, 737 and an A320. Uh, what that means uh, in uh, passenger speak is about five and a half hours. So if you draw that circle around Hua Hin, that would uh, allow us to draw flights from Southeast Asia, but also China and India. So we've chosen a strategy that has Singapore and Hong Kong domestic markets, as well as hop-off points for other destinations, being Europe, uh, North America, Australasia, Japan, and then focus on India and China. And we feel that that strategy, those four principally focused adding KL, because we have an existing flight coming yeah. in from there, a daily flight, mm -hmm. um, will continue. That will keep Wahin Airport busy uh, for the next few years. 
And there's always a lot of talk about that the airport's not big enough. So you just said that, you know, how long the, um, the runway is. So is there any plans to expand that in the near future so you, you can take bigger planes? Well, you know, the, the answer is yes and no. Uh, right now, if you, if you were to go to the airport today, you will see them working on the runway. So we're, we're doing the runway widening right now. That's a 250 million baht project and it's already begun. Um, the lengthening is a, is a slightly different issue. That would take us either into the water or into Palm Hills Gulf. Yes. Um, and I don't think that there, there's enough people living in Palm Hills that would probably uh, push back on that it one. Wouldn't be appreciated. <laughs> right. But honestly, that's not really the strategy. We feel that there's enough uh, demand and enough capacity at the current airport. What I might uh, suggest and a little more intriguing a part of the discussion is we see a greater opportunity to expand the success of Wakin Airport into the Thailand Riviera. Now, for definition purposes, the Thailand Riviera takes us into Champana and to Suratani. Yeah. That whole corridor will begin to open up because what we see is the traffic coming from Bangkok stopping in Wakin. Not a lot of appetite to go on. But if we open up the two new airports to international traffic with a similar strategy to uh, Wahin Airport, all of a sudden they'll have a footprint north and south of those airports and these things start connecting. And John, uh, how do you, are you getting people to get on the planes and come here? Like what, what's your plan and what's your strategy around getting to the populace out there? You know what, uh, that was a, uh, an intriguing part of my very first question when I took this on because you know, Wahin as a destination is pretty well known to me, but with the airport you know, almost quiet, I just thought that internationally it didn't have the exposure. You know, nothing could be further from the truth. Attracting airlines to Wahin, a known destination, and let me be very clear about that, there is no uh, gap in, in the awareness for Wahin, and we should all be, be you know, cognizant of that. So attracting airlines wasn't the biggest challenge. Making it a international destination that can uh, compete with Phuket, Samui, Bali is our goal. And that starts with the airport as an experience and all of the services you would expect, including shopping and duty free and the like. So um, attracting airlines is not our biggest challenge. We are working with TAT at the location as well as here, as well as some of the very big brands locally. But again, getting people involved in the project hasn't been the, the biggest challenge. Well, and there's a vested interest for the airlines to be promoting it to their fan base and that type of thing to get people getting them on the planes and flying them in here as well. So they've got a big vested interest in doing that. And, you know, those airplanes are sitting on runways now or in salt flats or wherever they, they put airplanes when uh, this is going on. I, I'll give you one example. So Jetstar has been pretty well publicized as one of our, our early and first partners. Yes. They have a database in Singapore of 800,000 people in Singapore. So drawing from that group should be able to fill a few planes uh, coming. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to say we're almost finished our, our first uh, uh, golf charters for November. So we're looking at a lot of different uh, plays on how to attract traffic to, uh, to Wahin. And when's your first plane dropping down and landing? We have plans for three airlines by the end of the fourth quarter. A lot of that has to do with the final announcements on recharge, as you can imagine, and how res restrictive recharge will be. Mm. But we'll land a plane end of October, beginning of November, and uh, November will build on, on, a, on a very light base, and December will be better. But our real strategy and the Phoenix plan, is, you know, as you're starting to play out, you'll see that in Q1. So we'll have a functional airport that can deliver on the requirements of the recharge program in the fourth quarter. But the Phoenix plan and the international experience you'll start to see coming out in the first quarter mm. of 22. I know there's a limited number of parking slots at the moment. Are those going to be expanded? Yeah, so if you know the footprint of the airport at all, you know we have the uh, Rainmaking Museum. Now you have the, the widening of the runway. So without too many large infrastructural changes, we'll be able to, you know, to park, you know, three or four flights. But, you know, planes, but that's not the biggest issue. We have a, we have a capacity of 48 flights a day right now. Our business plan doesn't get to 48 plans in a, in a realistic time frame. So I suspect before we, we get to a capacity issue, we will have started the expansion. And just go back to your earlier uh, comment, uh, Lee, you know, we have, we will add the first priority will be a domestic addition to our current airport, which will take out some of the, 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 the pains of having an international and a domestic flight. And that's within three years. And you talked uh, a little bit earlier around having events and other activities happening around the airport. 
how are you working with the infrastructure outside of the airport to support that growth or support the, you know, the people coming in and people wanting to park their cars and mm -hmm. all that type of thing? How are you working with, with that? Well, you know, I, I don't mind saying for a moment, although we will move outside of the airport, we think we have a lot of work to do within the airport. That transformation of Wahian Airport will happen every week because we will have a weekend market on Saturday and Sunday. We will have monthly events such as concerts and, and conferences at the airport, but we'll also have big events. Four times next year, we'll have a signature event, which will be, you know, the highlight is likely to be the Sunburn Concert Festival out of Goa in India, which there draws 400,000 people. You know, we're a little, little more modest than that. Yeah. You know, we're looking at 10 to 20,000, but we think that there's a lot to do within the existing airport. Now, as far as infrastructure parking, uh, we have some land on the other side of Pekasim Road, which mm -hmm. is, is in the blueprint. Um, we have ability to uh, expand around the airport for more parking and the like. So we think we have a, you know, a couple of years of just using the space that we already have. Uh, but our model, because, and I, I should go back and talk about this for a moment, smaller regional airports don't have enough traffic by themselves to justify expenditures on all of these different uh, um, activities and services. So Wahian Airport will partner with Wahian Town. And we're actively, and you'll hear a lot more of this hopefully in the near, in the next few weeks, but we'll be talking about the other activities that partner with the airport. And we'll be inviting small businesses, F&B, attractions, um, other services in town to join with the airport. Now that process will ensure that uh, we get our critical mass and we invite the expenditures that we want to see at the airport, but that'll be opportunities for smaller businesses too. Yeah, this sounds excellent, but because you're going to be involving the local community directly, if that's the case, and that and that can only be a positive thing. Well, you know, we were talking today with a, a number of uh, partners, potential partners in Bangkok, and you know, one of the things we don't have a lot here are large brands and and franchises. We have a lot of small businesses yeah. that are individual and independent. Yes, and that 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 requires us to be local, whether whether that was in the plan or not. That's the reality of being here. So, as many of these small uh, partners that who want to partner with the airport. Uh, there will be a process and, uh, and a structure to do that through a loyalty program or presence at the airport during the events. We see a lot of opportunity for this partnership to happen and uh, it's sincere because that's how we'll be successful in Hoi I think one of the unique things about Hoi Hin is that we have the ability to have the international brands but also have that real local feel which, which is quite unique for I think this town. How do you think you're going to go about doing that? Like who are you going to be talking to? How does all that happen? So we have a program called Active Life and Active Life is, uh, is let's call it a loyalty program for the moment but it's not a classic or traditional loyalty program. Everyone who comes into or lands at Wahian Airport will receive a gift. That gift is a, a goodie bag, let's call it, with a minimum value of 1,000 baht. Included in that will be free travel insurance, free membership at Be Well International Healthcare, but it'll also have vouchers and other freebies from the town. We will have a, a sales team on the ground. We'll also have a group of influencers going out and talking about these local establishments, interviewing the owners, making comments about uh, about each of these things. And we'll have the best restaurants and we'll have you know the attractions you must see when you come to walk in because people are gonna be looking for information and it's not like we're gonna go out and look for you know one of the big brands because you're gonna search a long time if you don't know where they are. We want that those hidden gems and we want the stories about walk in and that's the story we want to go back so the loyalty program builds on the back of the rabbit rewards program in Bangkok which has about yes. 5 million members they are our joint venture partner here so we'll access that for give, giving us you know access to large numbers of people but we'll be registering people to this program as well you know I'll give you another example Chubb Insurance which is a global yeah. brand everyone who lands at Wahian Airport will get free travel insurance everyone who drives from Bangkok um, and uh, registers for the program will get free roadside assistance. That means breakdown, key, towing, run out of gas, all of that will be taken care of by this program. So how is that actually going to be financed then? Who's going to pay for that? Included in the app will be a number of uh, vouchers and discounts. And as those vouchers and discounts are used, the wherever they're spent, a small amount goes back to the loyalty program to pay for the program. 
So I've got a question about international travellers. You know, they haven't been able to travel for a long, long time. Do you think that the traveller is looking for something different now that they haven't been travelling or is it the same, same? What's your gut feel? Yeah, I think that there's a couple of ways to, to look at that question. I think, number one, I think people are a little bit gun shy, honestly. But at the same time, there's huge pent up demand to get out. Um, I think smaller centers are a really nice answer to that question. And the story we're telling is, you know, you don't have to go to Bangkok and drive to Wahin for a couple of days. Why not come to Wahin and do a side trip to Bangkok to do your shopping? And then you can have, you know, what is a beautiful break and a beautiful vacation. The other great um, well-kept secret, I think, if, other than people that live here, is that do you realize that Wahin gets 60% less rainfall than Phuket? And Phuket is, you know, it's that airport is full, you know, almost the whole year. We are truly a year-round destination. You know, attracting people in the down in the down season or the off season is equally interesting to getting mm -hmm. people here. But you know, if you have a large Indian wedding that you're planning and you're going to spend a million dollars or more, do you want to take the risk on a on a, a rainfall? And we know in Phuket it can rain for a week. Oh, we can. Solid. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, so I think, you know, it's a combination of, you know, people will change their travel habits. Yes. I think that they'll stay longer. You know, we've been, um, as the success of international travelers here is limited to two or three days, honestly. And we know that because we're part of a bigger trip, generally from Bangkok. But we think that, uh, you know, those three or four day trips will become seven, 14 days, not only because of recharge, that's a short term uh, solution to a difficult problem. But long term, we just see uh, all of those passengers, all of those visitors extending their stay. And, you know, Wahin is an easy uh, answer to that as, a, as an option. And everyone else is so busy. So Wahin exactly. needs to make a bigger contribution yeah. to Thailand. Yeah. As a local resident, personally, I'm looking forward to being able to jump on a plane here fly down to KL or Singapore and then fly back to Europe direct. Hopefully that'll save a huge amount of time for local residents if they want to reach these other parts of the world. Absolutely. And, you know, we, that's why we've chosen Singapore and Hong Kong as those yeah. hop off points. Now, Hong Kong, uh, you know, it's getting a lot of press that it's increasingly tied to China. But I don't mind saying I have residents in Hong Kong, I have residents here. That flight flies full every time. And I don't, there must be 12 or 15 flights a day yeah. to Bangkok. You know, we only have to divert one or two per day to be successful here. We don't see that as a huge stretch, and that's certainly the feedback, you know, we're getting from our partners in Hong Kong. Is there anything you need to add? The one thing that we didn't, we weren't clear on in the beginning, we knew as a private company, bringing resources was critical to the equation. Yes. But I, I really do need to um, compliment the people at ReCharge, the people at the TAT, and the people at the local government but the support for the airport as the missing piece in Wahian's story, I think that, that the success of the airport will be shared by all of those people. You know, we might be the catalyst uh, for coming in first, but the support from the TAT and, and others in government will make this successful. Uh, certainly nothing we're gonna do on our own. John, thank you so much for talking with us. That's terrific. Thank you, I appreciate the time. Surf 102.5 Podcast.